The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday slash Sunday of the Passion. A special welcome to all guests and visitors and to all those who are joining us online. At this time, I invite Usher to please pass the welcome pads and the attendance sign-up sheets. And if you are visiting with us, please know that you are welcome to join us for any of the opportunities listed on those uh, attendance pads and also anything that I share with you during these announcements. First off, I want to share an announcement um, uh, regarding staff here at Abiding Christ. First, we want to give thanks uh, to Molly for her time as our administrative assistant. Uh, those of you who may not know, uh, she wrapped up her time here with Abiding Christ a couple weeks ago. And we are excited to announce that Lisa Ross, Lisa, wave your hands, woo, is jumping on into that role starting this week. So we are very excited and very glad that she is joining the team with us. So we are excited to see how the spirit continues to move. Uh, regarding Easter lily orders, we have um, an opportunity for folks, if you would like to provide an Easter lily for our uh, Easter worship services, the cost is $12, and today is the last day to purchase those. There are envelopes available with the ushers at the door, specifically for those Easter lilies, if you would like to purchase one. A reminder that each Sunday we have Sunday school with faith formation experiences for all ages at 9.45 a.m. This morning we had a very wonderful and very fun Reader's Theater version of Let My People Go. Um, it was a wonderful time. We give thanks for how Heather especially coordinated all of that and uh, made it so meaningful for everybody too. Um, Next Wednesday, or this coming Wednesday rather, there will be no meal or worship as we usually have. Um, that will resume next Wednesday, April the 3rd, uh, for the, may, the meal, the band style worship service with communion, and what's next conversation. That will all start again next Wednesday, April the 3rd at 5.45 p.m. All right, so we are in the midst of what is called Holy Week. It is a very exciting and one of the most uh, important and holy seasons in our church calendar. So today, like I said, we are celebrating the Sunday of the Passion, also sometimes referred to as Palm Sunday. You're already seeing some of the palms around. Uh, the service will be a bit different today as we dive into a liturgical or worship setting that strives to really immerse everyone into this uh, story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and the fateful week that would change the course of history and transform all of our hearts today as well. Everything you need for this service to participate in it will be on the, the slides, so feel free just to follow along and you'll be able to participate that way. Maundy Thursday, uh, we enter into the story of our Lord's Passion beginning with his Last Supper and his arrest. Uh, the worship service for that will be this Thursday, March 28th at 7 p.m. Good Friday worship, uh, that will be this Friday, how about that? Uh, we begin at 12 p.m., uh, or yes, noon, uh, downtown at Fifth Third Commons, uh, the corner of West Grand and Main Street, and then we'll process down to Emmanuel Ministries at 100 East Main for prayer on the church steps. Uh, this uh, Walk with the Cross event takes about 30 minutes, so you all are welcome for that. It's a way that we can witness as uh, many different uh, church communities as uh, witnessing to our Lord's uh, ministry and sacrifice for our sakes. And then Good Friday Worship at Abiding Christ uh, will be Friday evening at 8 p.m., and then on Saturday morning, we have our Easter egg scavenger hunt, Saturday, March 30th, 1130 to 1 o'clock. Lunch is provided, rain or shine, the event's happening. And that uh, folks can participate in that if they're sixth grade and younger. There are some Easter goodies that are still needed for that. So if you'd like to provide items, a shopping list is available at the welcome desk. And please return items by March 28th for that. Easter Vigil for Saturday evening, that will be at St. John's Lutheran Church in Vandalia at 7 p.m. That's one of our Lutheran Saints and Ministry partners. Easter Vigil is an event where we especially celebrate how the Holy Spirit rose uh, or resurrected Jesus uh, from the tomb in the middle of the night, actually. So that's uh, an event to especially uh, commemorate that resurrection moment specifically. And then Easter Sunday worship, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, how he appears to the disciples after his resurrection. That will be Sunday, March 31st at our usual service times of 8.30 and 11 a.m. And Easter breakfast will be starting at 9.45 a.m. in Meister Hall on Easter. And all are welcome to all of these different events throughout Holy Week. I want to remind you all that we continue to pray for communities across the area that are recovering from the storms and tornadoes that swept through on March 14th. 
Galilee Lutheran Church at Russell's Point and Lutheran Disaster Response are working as spaces and communities to coordinate um, continued relief that meets the most immediate needs and ongoing needs as well. So if you would like to donate to the relief efforts across the Senate, you're welcome to mail a check to the Southern Ohio Senate's P.O. Box, or you can donate online designating it for SOS, Southern Ohio Senate, dash disaster relief. And beyond Easter, uh, we have some other announcements that we wanted to share, just to put it in your minds for now. Um, a couple Sunday school opportunities that we're excited about. On Sunday, April 7th, I'll be offering a presentation and a question and answer opportunity that dives into my recent trip to mainland Greece to explore some of the places that the Apostle Paul traveled to and ministered to on his second missionary journey. Photos, videos, commentary, and large group discussion will be offered, so please come and join this opportunity to learn and see and hear more about the spirit-filled journey of Paul and all the early church community members as well. And then on Sunday, April 14th and 21st, Pastor June and I are excited to be facilitating another set of exploring discipleship classes. These sessions are especially meaningful for people who are interested in learning more about the key themes of our faith and also learning about how we live into these commitments here as the Abiding Christ community. Whether you or someone you know would like to become an official ministry partner here at Abiding Christ, want to revisit any of the topics that we cover, want to dive into meaningful discussions with others on these types of topics, or just want to get to know your siblings in Christ a little bit better, please feel free to join and share these opportunities with others as well. For prayer concerns, just a reminder that if you have any prayer requests, you can add them to the binder right outside of the sanctuary doors or contact the office for the prayer chain. And we will include first names in the prayers of intercession as directed by those making the requests. With all of that in your brains now, I invite you to turn your hearts and minds to God as we listen to our prelude. We are entering now into the holiest week of the church year. Today we read the story of our Lord's passion, the story of our salvation. Today is not only about triumph, 
It is about preparation for the Passover. It is about disappointment, the power of this world, and the worst that we can do to the Son of God. Today is also our story, and it is the story of the amazing love that God has for each of us. I invite you to please pray with me. Almighty God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh upon him and to suffer death on the cross. Grant that we may share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able as we move into a time of confession and forgiveness. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we receive the offering... Uh, children are invited to join me over in the welcome area as we prepare to participate in the Parade of the Palms.
When Jesus drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent ahead two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite. There you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus. And throwing their garments on the colt, they set Jesus upon it. And as he rode along, they spread their garments on the road. As he was now drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, singing, some Pharisees in the multitude cried out to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. They're calling you the Christ. Tell them to be silent. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the very stones themselves would cry out.
he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that even today you knew the things that make for peace, but know they are hidden from your eyes. O oh, Jerusalem, the days shall come upon you when your enemies will cast up a bank about you and surround you, and hem you in on every side, and dash you to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the day of your visitation. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is also called the Passover, and the temple priests were seeking how to put Jesus to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was of the number of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the temple priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and engaged to give him money. So he agreed and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. They, they said, said to him, him but, but where, where Lord? Where will you have us prepare it? And what are we to do? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house which he enters and tell the householder. The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room. There, make ready. And they went and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he sat at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. I invite you to please rise as you were able. Remember how Jesus took the bread, and when he had broken it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup after supper. He blessed it, and he said, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. You may take your seat, and now some guidelines for communion. Hear and believe this good news that God calls all people to this table to share God's food. We have both gluten and gluten-free wafers. If you need gluten-free, please tell me or Pastor June. There are pre-filled cups with grape juice in the inner rings of the trays. The communion system has wine in the pouring chalice. You're welcome to take an empty cup from the tray, and the assistant will then pour the wine into the empty cup. All empty cups may then be placed in the baskets at the end of each of the front rows. If you desire to learn more about this gift before receiving, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Additionally, as you come forward, you are invited to remember your baptism by dipping your fingers into the font here and then making the sign of the cross upon your forehead. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all is ready.
And Jesus said, Behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. And they began to question, Who, Lord, who is it to betray you? Is it I? Is it I? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. Oh, it would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Is it I, Master? Jesus said to him, You have said so. Simon Peter was indignant, but not I, he said. And he declared, Though they all fall away from you, I will never leave you. Peter, truly I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. And, and so, so said all the disciples, disciples over and over, and over again. again. And Jesus went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Lead us, us not, not into, into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away, and knelt down and prayed, Father, if thou art willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done. Amen. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Lead us, Lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from, us from evil. evil. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Judas said, Hail, Master. When, when the, the disciples, disciples saw, saw what, what would follow, follow they, said, they said, Lord, shall, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, Enough of this! And he touched his ear and healed him. Forgive, forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us. Jesus said to those who had come out against them, When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands upon me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him. Then they seized him and brought him to the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a woman, seeing him in the light, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And later someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, Sir, I am not. 
An hour later, another insisted, saying, Certainly this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Sir, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows, you will deny deny me three times. And he wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus mocked him and beat him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy, who who is is it that struck struck you? you? And they spoke many other words against him, reviling him. When that day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together and led him to the high council. And they they said, said, If if you you are are the Christ, Christ, tell tell us. us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you now, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And they they said, said, Are you you then then the the Son of of God? God? And he said to them, You say that I am. And they they said, said, Blasphemy! What What further further testimony do we need? We We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Blasphemy! Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they they began began to curse him, him, saying, saying, We have have found this man perverting our nation nation, and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ the king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered, You have said so. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no crime in this man. But they they were were urgent, urgent, saying, He he stirs up the people, people, teaching throughout Galilee, even to this place. And when Pilate heard that he was a Galilean of Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod. Where he was vehemently accused and treated with contempt and mocked and arrayed in gorgeous purple and then sent back again. Pilate said to the rulers of the people, you brought me this man as one who was perverting the people and after examining him, behold, I do not find him guilty of the charges against him. Behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise and release him. But they they all cried out, Away with with this man! Release to us Barabbas! Barabbas, a man who had been imprisoned for insurrection and murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus. But But they they shouted out, Crucify him! him. Crucify him! him. Why? What evil has he done? I found no crime in him deserving death. I'll chastise him. I'll release him. But But they they were urgent, demanding loudly that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been jailed for murder, but delivered Jesus up to their will. But Jesus he delivered over to their will. And as as they they led him away, they see Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, 
and laid upon, upon him, him the cross to carry it behind, behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning, said, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and your children. For behold, the days are coming when you will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Forgive, forgive us, us our, our trespasses. trespasses. And they cast lots to divide his garments. Forgive, forgive us our trespasses. And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God. Forgive, Forgive us our trespasses. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar. And there, and there was, was an inscription over him, him. This, this is, is the, the king, king of, of the Jews. Jews. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us our trespasses. One of the criminals who were hanged with him railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since we are under the same sentence and justly? This man has done nothing wrong. And turning to Jesus, he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. kingdom. And Jesus said to him, And, and the, the power. power. Truly, truly, I say to you, And, and the, the glory. glory. This day you will be with me in paradise forever and ever. Amen.
It was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, when the sun's light faded, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Then Jesus, with a loud voice, cried out, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. And all the multitudes who had assembled to see this sight, when, when they, they saw, saw what, what had taken place, place returned home beating their breasts. And all Follow his acquaintances and the, and the women, women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, at a distance and saw these things. things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the town of Arimathea, a good man, a righteous man, one looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. And the, and the women, women who, who had, had come, come with him from, from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how, and how his, his body was laid. laid. Then, then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. And on the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Now let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the knee the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Now go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 